Are you ready? My coach, Barbara H. Smith. Why did I hire her? Because she's the best. Barbara H. Smith is a powerhouse. She just walks in the room and grabs your attention, and uh, she does that in a way that just makes you feel loved and like she's um, paying attention to you, she cares about you, and she wants to see you be your best self. She was able to dig inside and find a passion that was deep within me. Barbara's energy is one of the, uh, one of the reasons that I had to have her as my coach. I love the way she is real with people. The reason I felt like I needed a coach was because I have some big goals and I needed um, to build my confidence. I knew that Barbara could help me do that. I felt that um, I could trust her. I would definitely recommend to get coaching from Barbara H. Smith if you feel like you need to level up your confidence. She would just help you feel like bold, like you can take on the world. She has really shown me who I am. She has changed my mindset to a place that I know that I am more powerful today than I would have ever been if I had never met Barbara Smith. Whoa, here we go, here we go. Here we go, here we go. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Barbara H. Smith Show. It is a Tuesday night and I am so grateful that you're here. So grateful that you're here. Let me first bring up the incomparable, the lovely, the sexy, savvy Shawnee Smith. Here we go, right? Good evening. Good evening. I'm so excited for tonight. You should be. We have a great show tonight, Shawnee. Yes. What a fantastic January this has been so far. I and know, and then we got different. February coming up with some really, really cool stuff. What's February about? February is about matters of the heart. The one in your body and the one up here. Oh, well, right. Know about that one, right? <laughs> we are going to have some fabulous guests for you, but right now I want to introduce our first guest. She is an award-winning speaker, certified world-class speaking coach, certified virtual presenter, girl after my own heart in that case, and the founder of Rokita Johnson Public Speaking LLC. She transforms Christian female professionals and entrepreneurs from simply being public speakers to being powerful presenters. Like I said, a girl after my own heart. Her goal is not to change who a person authentically is, but instead to bring out the best version of who they already are as a speaker. Through her one-on-one -on -one sessions, group coaching, and training programs. She works with clients on presentation, creation, audience engagement, managing nerves, and so much more. She's originally from Bridgeport Connection, Tri-City in the house, and now lives in Huntsville, Alabama. Rakita considers it a calling to help people get this, slay the stage. I love that. She is also a proud co-author of the Black Speakers Network's Amazon best number one best-selling book, Speak Up, The Ultimate Guide to Dominate in the Speaking Industry. Help me welcome to the show, Rakita Johnson. Here we go, here we go. Is your mic on mute? It is not anymore. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara, for having me. Thank you, Shani. You are so Listen. welcome. So how did we find this gem, Shani? Listen, I found, you know, where you find them, the, the best place to find them, right? Thank Online. You. I found her. <laughs> oh, I found her. I heard her speak and I said, this is it. She's the this one. She's we the must one. hear her. So, so let me Shani ask you, how did you come up with speaking as a profession what was it i like to tell people that i i am my client <laughs> i started in it because i was not good at it so Ooh. it wasn't something that mm -hmm. i set out to do mm -hmm. i had a job years ago where i was promoted quickly and i had to get better with my public speaking skills i felt like I was not communicating with clarity at all, and I wanted to feel a bit more poised. So that's mm -hmm. when I started getting help for public speaking myself. 
I started entering speech contests. I found out I liked public speaking, which I never thought I could. And then I just made my way into the speaker world and started my business. Now, when you say you made your way into the speaker world, there are a lot of people out there who think they want to be speakers and they don't know where to start. What would you suggest? You need to start within your sphere, your local sphere, when you want to be a speaker. I think that's the case with most most things you want to do. Mm -hmm. Start with people you know. So if you are part of a church community, maybe you can volunteer to speak there. If you are part of some type of organization, um, like Toastmasters is known for public speaking. I'm a Toastmaster myself. Or the Rotary, anything like that, you have ample speaking opportunity. They're always looking for speakers there. Mm -hmm. Anybody within your sphere of influence, you can reach out to see if you can speak for something that they're having. It's the easiest way to start. Start with who you know and what you know. All right now, Shami, what do you have to say? I want to know, I also am a Toastmaster. I actually joined Toastmasters last year and it's really transformed. On the other side, it also made me focus on some things that I wish I didn't focus on as much because I'm so good for counting ums and ahs now. I'm like, ooh, not good. <laughs> so what are some issues that you hear from women who contact you about how, how to coach, you know, how to be coached rather? One big thing that I hear with women as of late is something that they have called code switching, which is a mm. term that's been coming up a lot where we feel like we have to change the words that we say or maybe change how we talk or something about how we look so that we can better appeal to the audience that we're speaking to. But one thing that I really coach my clients on is it's important to be authentic and the audience really does want you to be yourself. Now, you're not going to completely change the way you talk, but with any audience that you are speaking to, you are going to have to learn about them. You do need to speak the language that they speak so they can be receptive to the message that you're giving them. But it's not about you changing up who you are, you know, which is stemming from insecurity. It's about mm -hmm. being able to connect with the audience in an authentic way mm -hmm. while also speaking their language, but being yourself. So it's a delicate yeah. balance, but that's something I hear a lot. Yeah, yeah, because you have to be able to be authentic. You have to know who you are first. You said that, and that is huge because I didn't know who I was for a long time. But you have to know who you are. And then the second part of that is knowing your audience because you can't speak the same to an audience of all women as you can with an audience of men and women together. You can't speak the same to an audience of children that you're going to speak to the same way you speak to adults. So you are so right and dead on about that. Right. So you didn't start out speaking. That is amazing because you're very articulate now. And then you said you did some work. What kind of work were you doing before you started speaking? So before I made my way into the the fantastic glamorous world of public speaking. I came from the marketing world. I have a marketing background. That's where I was for years. Now, I didn't go to school for that. I went to school for business, but I made my way into marketing because I like the creative aspect, which I can also use in public speaking. But that's where I was, just different aspects of marketing, email marketing, managing websites, social media marketing, wow. direct marketing, all those skills that I had to do for someone else, I know how mm -hmm. to do them for myself, which is the good thing. So everything that we have done, I, I like to tell my clients, you don't always have to discard your past or who you were. You can take that and you can use it for where you are now as a speaker. What are those skills that are gonna be able to serve you well in this new journey that you're on? That's so good. Now, now, speaking of new journey, how did the pandemic affect your business overall? My business actually did better. <laughs> Let's talk the about main, that. 
It Wait, say better. that again for the people in the back. Why did it do better? Come on. <laughs> it, it did better. I mean, unfortunately, I know a lot of businesses were negatively yeah. affected, but I happen to be one of the businesses where I was positively affected, mainly because everybody had to do their presentations or just speak in general virtually. Online, people, that's right. people saw themselves and even more so their bosses saw them and they saw that their public speaking skills were not up to par. Some of their staff, they were not comfortable speaking virtually. They may have been okay speaking in person, but mm -hmm. virtual can make some people feel a bit more self-conscious. So I had some organizations who reached out to me to train your staff. So we talked right. about confidence and, you know, the nuts and bolts of public speaking, good presentation and how to do some things virtually that are a little different from in person. So that's like really what? why my business jumped up. What What's different about speaking virtually that's not the same as speaking in person? Help Help us here. Well, for one, you see me, I'm looking directly into the camera. Correct. What do, what do a lot of people do? They're Look looking at down at everybody else and they don't realize that people think you're looking down and we don't see you looking at us. When Correct. we are in person, we don't even have to really think about that. We're looking around the room. We're looking at the audience members. We look in their faces, but it is intimidating for some people to have to look directly into the camera or just downright weird for some of them because they feel like I'm looking into a black hole. Are, are, they, <laughs> are they there? Are they really no. listening to me? So that's why people are looking down at the audience members instead of looking directly at them. So that connection is broken there. So that's that was a major thing. I found Crazy. something that we think is simple, mm -hmm. you know, because we are in this world, but it's it's not second nature to a lot of people to look in the camera. So so here's here's a tip for those of you out there who don't know how to look in the camera. Position the camera and your picture directly under the camera and look at yourself. If your picture is directly under the camera, then it looks as though you're looking into the camera. So then it's not so weird as just looking around. Now, the problem with that is when you're a presenter, you're supposed to, of my S-T-O-R-Y formula, observe the audience. So you have to watch the faces. That's if they leave the cameras uncovered. That's the other That's the other stressful thing. When you're right, because <laughs> you don't know if you lost them. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you engage? How do you engage people in an online setting? Tell us about that, Rokita. One easy way that you can engage is, is something that you can actually do in person. Mention people's names. Something, the, what do people love to hear most? Our name. That's what yeah. we love to hear most. Yeah. So when you can, even when you're giving a long presentation, call people's names out at certain intervals throughout. For one, that is going it's going to make people engage with you. They're going to be like, oh, okay, great. So it doesn't feel like so much of a lecture, but also it puts the other participants on guard that I better pay attention, pay attention. because she might call on me next. So it works well in both situations. There's two benefits there. Speaking of which, I want to shout out to Cherie Burrell out there. Don't get it twisted. I might call on you. So, and Juanita McWhite is out there. Hey, Juanita, glad to see you. She said, hello, all. So glad to see you out there. And for anybody else that may be out there lurking, we love to have <laughs> visitors on our site. We're talking to the fabulous Rakita Johnson and, of course, the sensational Shawnee Smith. Shawnee, what else you got? Now, I want to know next would be, how did you decide to serve the market that you serve? Mm, and what is your market? My market is Christian female professionals and entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Again, my client is myself, a Christian female who's, who was a professional working in corporate. And I felt like my presentation, not I felt, I knew my presentation skills were subpar. We are so ambitious. You know, a lot of us women, we want to move up the corporate ladder. Yeah. We at least want to feel like, 
we are not going to to melt into the floor when we have a speaking opportunity. So right. that's why that market touched me so much. And then these are women who, like I said, they're Christian women. So they really have this spiritual aspect to them. They bring God into their work. So it's yeah. not just this is work that I'm doing. This is not my nine to five or this is not the practice that I own. But everything that I do, you know, I'm bringing glory to God mm -hmm. and what I do. So that's why that excellent. market resonates. I love yes, that. I love that. Hey, Rosalind. Roz is out there. Rosado, she says, nice to see Barbara and Shani. So glad you're out here with us. We are again talking to the fabulous Rakita Johnson. And we're finding out all kinds of tips, techniques, and traits to do and use on the platform when you stand out there. Lee Anna Lloyd is out there. Great conversation, she says. Hello, everybody. Thank you for being out there. We appreciate your presence and we don't take it for granted. We are grateful that you're out here. Please share, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Absolutely. Um, bit.ly forward slash BHS YouTube. It's simple as that. Just bit.ly forward slash BHS capital letters YouTube. Subscribe, like, share, and become our friends so that we can grow this community. We love having people on the show that mm -hmm. are bringing value to the community. And that's what this show is about. In case you didn't know, this show is showcasing business owners and entrepreneurs, C level executives, people who are doing things, movers and shakers that are doing things in the community. So we're glad to have Rokita Johnson. And I want to throw it back to Shani again. What oh, else? Other way. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say also, Michelle Grant gave a big thumbs up for the show too as well. So thank you, Michelle, for tuning in. Thank now, you. who's on your wish list, Rokita? Who would you want to share the stage with? Ooh, good question. Ooh, so many, so many great speakers out here. However, and I know you said you're a new Toastmaster, Shani. So I don't, I don't know how many of the the world champion public speakers. I don't know how many of them you know going back, going back like over a decade. The one speaker who I would love. There's a few, but the top of my list is Craig Valentine. He is the 1999 Toastmasters World Champion of Public Speaking, and his program is the one that I went through years ago to become a certified speaking coach. Craig, I can't say enough about him. He's magnetic. He's engaging. Craig owns the stage. When we hear that phrase, having stage presence, he's fantastic. His humor, he's really known for his humorous style. So I really admire him. And Craig is all over these speaking streets. He's all over. I love him. So I would love to share the stage. With I him. like that. He's all over these speaking streets. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So who, who's number two? Number two. Oh, number two. I would say, well, we have the incomparable Les Brown, who is amazing. Everybody oh, yeah. knows Les Brown, Mamie oh, yeah. Brown, baby boy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Les, Les, Les 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 yes, yes, everybody knows everybody. his signature story. And and that's and that's uh, true to speakers who have made their mark. They have one signature story that everybody knows, and so that's what we have to come up with as speakers. What is our signature story? What's the story that resonates with people, not just people, but resonates with us so that it does resonate with people? Um, I want to talk about going forward. What is your plans for the new year and beyond? What's, what's Rokita Johnson planning for? Well, something new that I started with Shani was talking about earlier, which I hopped off of and hopped on here. I have started a quarterly small group presentation skills program for women, mm -hmm. and it's called Slay the Stage. Like literally a small group. I'm only accepting up to 12 women in it, but it's going to give them the fundamentals that they need of great public speaking talking about things like structure, content, delivery and whatnot. So if you're not ready, quite ready for one-on-one -on -one coaching just yet, it's a good way to dip your toe in the water 
to greatly improve your public speaking skills. So that's one thing I've started at Slay the Stage. Also, some of my coaching programs in general, just how I work with people one-on-one, -on -one, just finding a lot of my clients needed more help than I think they realized they needed. So just working more intensely with my clients this year, really just building those connections and getting into more organizations. Because I work with a lot of private clients, but my agenda for this year is to get more into those organizations who, the corporations, I should say, where they're like, they know their staff needs to improve their public speaking skills. But for whatever reason, maybe they don't know, public speaking coaches can come in and help them with that, to help them with their virtual speaking skills, because that's mm. still a big problem. Not problem, because I don't want to say it Not like that, but that it's is still, it's still a challenge for people, yeah, virtual yeah, speaking, yeah. and it's not going anywhere anytime no. soon. No. Just so what that I was is, about to say, it's here to stay. It's here. It, it really is. Mm. At best, you might have a hybrid situation, but it's going to be rare that it's going to, something is going to be strictly only in person. So really just getting, you know, expanding my territory when it comes to virtual to just teaching people, you don't have to suffer with it. We know you don't like the, we know you like to look at yourself, but you, you got to look at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can, I, get, I just gave you a tip on how you can look at yourself. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> correctly. Because that's, that's what I do. I mean, it looks like I'm looking at you, but I'm looking at me looking at you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. And, uh, it's almost like you believe that you guys are really making eye contact. You know, yes. it's, it's really strange how this thing works, but, you know, I love it. But I but love how Barbara said that. Confidence. Say it again. I love how she said that, though, because that's, that's a similar tip that I give when people want to feel more comfortable speaking. I'm like, put a photo up of somebody you love or your dog, like right near the camera, because that'll make you feel at least a little bit better. Like you're speaking to somebody and not speaking into a black hole. <laughs> oh, I like, see, but well, I talk to myself all the time. So this is really normal for me. Just talk to me. I talk little to me. Mirror I, chats. I'm going to say, do, do you answer yourself back? Mm -hmm. You mean, <laughs> what did you say? Yeah, I said that. Did you say that really? Yeah, I said that. So I talk to myself all the time and it works anyway. So <laughs> for my insecure fans out there, I'm like, this is my, my ISA time, you know I mean? Okay. Let's have a little talk. Let me do a little mirror talk. There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> How do we get in touch with you, Rokita? You can reach out to me through my website, rokitajohnson.com. I am also active, very active on Instagram. So you can find me posting every day on there. My name is Rokita Johnson underscore public speaking. I'm also on LinkedIn. I know Shani and I connected on LinkedIn. And I also have a YouTube page, which is just under my name, Rokita Johnson. So you can go there to find more public speaking tips. If you also go to my website and you want to sign up for the email list, I do have a freebie. It's 30 days of public, public speaking improvement for Christian female professionals and entrepreneurs. So if you're like, I need small steps for how I can gradually improve every day, that is a good guide that you can start with. And again, it's free. Absolutely. And you know, Brian McNeil, Brian McNeil, whoo, Brian McNeil, no. Brian is backstage. It is Brian McNeil. I was thinking Brian McNeil at the same time. Brian <laughs> McNeil is in the backstage. And he said he just hit up Craig Valentine for you, Rokita, and told him about your shout out. Yeah, how about that? So Thank he you knows Brian. you shout him out. <laughs> all of our races, though. So, so very cool. Right out here, we have Sheree again saying this was very informative. So happy you're here with us. So happy we had a yeah. chance to talk to you about speaking because it is important. Everybody knows how to talk. Mm -hmm. We learned that very early, but everybody doesn't know how to present well. Yes. And the thing I find is people don't want to admit, they don't admit that they don't have great speaking skills because they think they got this. Yes. Until they're yes. standing in front of other people and they're sleeping. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Till you find out you <laughs> lost them, right? <laughs> yeah, so give us another tip on how to keep people engaged virtually. 
Another way you can keep people engaged virtually is, for one, we can't have, we have to break things up shorter virtually, whereas you can go a little bit longer in person. It's different online. People are being distracted easily by social media, by their phone, all of this stuff. So if you build in breaks, I find, and give people something fun and easy to, to do. do. Almost yes. like, you know, <laughs> like like a game. And here's an example. If, especially if you want to get people moving, if, if it's an early in the morning type meeting when people are usually, you know, they're groggy, yeah. they're not trying to move around as much. You can say, and it's a game called pick, pick yellow, but you can use any color, pick green, pick red. I want you to quickly go find something yellow, the closest thing yellow near you. Grab that, bring it back, talk about it for 30 seconds or 60 seconds. That works well with a small group, but that's just one thing that you can do. You got to give people good. something to do, like get yeah. them moving sometimes. I love it. Yeah, I love it too. And and it's not always getting them up and moving. Get them to do something in the chat. You know, yes. uh, one of the one of the icebreakers I use is I say, okay, so in the morning, do you have coffee? Do you have tea? Do you have water? Do you have nothing? Type in the chat for me. Coffee, tea, water, or nothing. Some people put in mimosa. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and so you call their names out, which is you what you alluded to earlier. So, uh, for example. Juanita McWhite just put out their great tips and very helpful for everyday conversation. You call the people out and, you know, include them in the conversation because it engages them and they were listening and they want to type things so that they can hear themselves being brought into the inf information that you're given. So right. I do yeah. that a lot. I do that a lot because people, I teach people have the attention span of a goldfish, which is eight seconds. A little bit less now, right? Yep. A little bit less. Yeah. Now, be, because you are such a dynamic speaker, you're a great coach. Is that why you got called in on this anthology that you're co-author of? <laughs> like, how did that happen? Great question. So, I'm a part of the Black Speakers Network. I don't know if you've heard of them, but it's I headed have. up. Yay! Go Back Speakers Network. So I'm a partner with them as well. And Brian Olds, who founded the network, mm -hmm. and Brian are, we, we're very cool with each other. So he had this vision that he wanted to create a one-stop shop for speakers. It's good for aspiring speakers, emerging, even if you are currently a speaker and you need to freshen up your skills, so to speak. So he wanted to get... 30 plus of the best people that he knew that specialized in certain areas, but it all connected to the speaking industry somehow. So for example, my chapter, which is called Slay the Stage, is about how to craft your keynote speech, but I give public speaking tips in there that can be really used for any type of speech. Someone else talks about what you need to have on your website when we talk about your digital presence as a speaker, yes. someone else talks about the public relations aspect of it, getting your yes. name out there. What are low cost or free ways that you can get press around you? So we all just collaborated on this book and it was like December when we started, uh, December when we started working on it and it came out in March. It was very, very fast. So if anyone on here, anyone who's watching, you really do want to get started as a speaker. I urge you, urge you, you want to get this book. This this is this is a guide for you that is going to help you with experts, over 30 experts in different fields. How can we get That's it? Amazing. You can get it in two places. It is okay. sold on Amazon. It's also sold on my website, rokitajohnson.com. So if you do want a personally autographed signed copy order it from my website but if you order it from amazon i'm sorry it's, it's not gonna be signed by anybody but you can order it from me <laughs> <laughs> that's right we are at the top of the hour what a shout out one more time sheree burrell says and barbara puts her hands on her hips 
<laughs> as a show of confidence. Yes, I do. Right. Yes, I do. Uh, and Roz is out there. She says, engage with a question virtually and cause people to li like to share because people like to share. And she loved my goldfish comment. Most people do because people are like goldfish when it comes to attention span. One more time, Rokita, how do we get in touch with you? You can get in touch with me at my website, rokitajohnson.com. It's spelled just like my name, R-O-Q-U-I-T-A, johnson.com. You're, you're not going to find anybody else with my name or website, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> you One of a kind in every way, right? You're yes. not going to find it. And, and yes. Instagram. Again, I'm very active on Instagram, so I love to connect there. You can find me there. And that is right. You can find her everywhere online. She's very social on social media. Juanita McWhite is saying it's better to practice what you're going to say before you go live. And she does a lot of jewelry and she does handcrafted silver jewelry. So you want to check out Juanita McWhite. She's out there as well. Shani, take us to the break. Rokita, listen, I also want to say hello. Uh, Helen Plant gave us a thumbs up as well. So hello, <laughs> Helen. How are you? <laughs> I want to say that we, we heard about how we can get in contact with you. We heard about what you do. I urge everyone listening to contact Rokita Johnson because she's going to get you there. Brian McNeil also said that Brian Olds is his boy. So he is very connected as well. He's coming up next. And... We will see you shortly. Stay tuned. Stay in the back because we want to get back with you, okay? Thank you. Thank you so much, Shani and Barbara. This was this was great. I enjoyed being here. Thank you so much. Thank you for being Thank here. Thank you for having me. Right after the break, we have Bye. another person coming up. Stay tuned. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Engage, inspire, empower. That's what I help you do as a celebrity, speaker, trainer, and coach. Hi, I'm Barbara H. Smith, known as the Masterful Presenter. I am the one that can help you dig deep, deep inside your passions and deep inside your life to get you to the place you always dreamed. I had the um, pleasure of hearing Miss Barbara Holmes Smith speak today. And just from her speaking to me today, I have realized that I need to have um, personalize my alter ego and, and be able to put myself out there a lot more. I help through speaking techniques, teaching you how to use your words and your body language to inspire people to come up higher. Today's presentation with Ms. Barbara was just outstanding. She has really helped me with her personality, with her being so genuine and passionate about what she believed in and helping to coach, train. Her sense of humor, her um, energy is just, it's just incredible. How do I do that? By coaching and speaking and training. I help you with whatever it is that you want to do next. What is your next? Are you ready to take your life, your career, to the next level? I can get you there. Contact me at www.barbara8smith.com. We're back. We're back. Listen, people. How Stay tuned. We have an executive women's retreat coming up this fall. Be on the lookout for information mid-February for the details. But ladies, you don't want to miss this. We're talking three days of relaxation, of networking, of just really getting together and just... <sighs> exhaling. Exhaling. <laughs> <laughs> We have a, a phot photography shoot. We have a makeup artist, wardrobe. It is going to be relaxing with massages and facials and just all kinds of and wonderful mimosas. things. Don't forget those mimosas. <laughs> pampering us. Pampering us. Don't we need it? We need it. Yes. We're Next really up. Celebrate us. We're going to celebrate us. We have the sales 
confidence coach. He's also a four-time author, speaker, workshop facilitator, and the owner and founder of the Sales Confidence Coach. Brian has been helping organizations, individual entrepreneurs, salespeople to sell themselves and their services. He helped me be a better salesperson, better than they ever had before. Sure that, sure that. So that they can earn more money than ever before. And he's been doing that since 1991. Thousands of people across all of the globe have been wild and greatly benefited by Brian and his sales methodologies. Brian has thousands of testimonials that talk about how he knows his stuff and his stuff works. The shortcut, the fastest route to selling your services better than you ever had before so that you can earn more money than you ever had before. Asking for the money is another one. Has anyone, ha, how anyone can close more sales, even me, even you. And why rhinos make good, great salespeople, featuring Mr. Randall the Rhino. This is not just a children's book, although it is a children's book. Brian is also the founder and chief facilitator of M, period E, period N, Men, Male Empowerment Networks of Charlotte, North Carolina. And Men has been helping men and teenage men since August 2013. Brian is happily married with six adult children and six amazing grandchildren. Help me bring to the show, Brian K. McNeil. Oh, does Barbara bring you out or does Barbara <laughs> bring you out? <laughs> I get that a lot, Brian. I get that a lot. That's great. That's beautiful, sister. Beautiful, beautiful. I love it. Thank I you, love, ladies, for having me. We love having you on the platform. You are such a dynamic speaker as well. We love, love, love having speakers on the platform. I think today's speaker day or something. I don't know. So <laughs> Charlene Brown is out there. Juanita McWhite says, yes. And Charlene says, Cherie Darnese Burnell, Burrell, thanks for inviting her. Thank you, Cherie, for inviting me, all the people that you invite. And thank you all for being out there. We have a phenomenal guest, Brian K. McNeil. So tell us a little bit about Brian. I didn't know you had six kids. Okay, I'm just saying. <laughs> Yes, I've done it six times in my life. Um, I've been fruitful and multiplied. But the way I start this talk off, I will say this, that our lives are not scrimmages or practice games. There is no martyrs hall of fame. Time this feaster takes its toll. And for us as entrepreneurs, every day really is the Super Bowl. My name is Brian K. McNeil, and I am the sales confidence coach. And I will do anything that Barbara H. Smith tells me to do. So if she gives me an opportunity to be here, I'm going to be here. And I promise everyone that pays attention to this segment is going to be better at selling themselves and their services than they were before we started talking. And this is not what I hope to do. It's what I know will happen over the next few minutes. Well, I'm going to not even talk this part of the segment. Johnny's not going to talk this part of the segment. We want you to do your thing. Show us what you bring to the table when you help people bring their sales confidence to another level. All right, I will do that. Thank you, Sister Barbara. Um, I, first off, I want to say um, Rakita was great. I really enjoyed her as well. And I took Barbara's suggestion. It is difficult for me to not glance at the boxes on Zoom because I do a lot of Zoom presentations. But when Barbara said, put a picture of yourself up next to the camera, so I was like, man, how would I do that? How would I do that? So I, my business card has my picture on it. So I grabbed one of my business cards and I just happened to have seen a bobby pin and I pinned it to the top of my laptop so I can look at myself because I just, whatever Barbara says do, that's what we're going to do. Okay. <laughs> but um, I'm going to demonstrate some stuff and I'm a blessed today. I'm going to be very generous with what I give. And ladies, if you want to interject at any time or anybody, you won't throw me off, I promise. But I'm going to I'm going to play with Sister Shawnee first. Okay. Shawnee, are you feeling courageous tonight? I am on the spot, so I better, <laughs> I better, if I'm afraid, I better do it anyway. So, okay. Okay, now watch this. Now, Barbara has been so gracious. Now, first off, she's amazing, but she's also willing to receive. And I love that about Barbara. She's not only amazing at speaking, she's beautiful to look at, and she's willing to let other experts showcase their stuff. So, Barbara, I want you to know I appreciate you. But, Shawnee, I got four questions for you. And I've taken Barbara through these four questions that I'm about to take you through already. 
Okay. okay. I've done it with her. So I'm going to do it okay. with you too. Question number one, I'm going to put you in a scene. Shawnee, if you were at a live networking event and it was a good one and you were having a good time there and you enjoyed the people you were meeting and you met some cool folks there and one of these cool people that you just met said, Shawnee, what do you do for a living? In that scene, sister, what will you say? Well, you know, are you sure you want me to answer this? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. So you know how people can't recreate the same dish every time, or maybe they can't cook at all? Well, what I do is <laughs> I help them put together blends that make their food taste well and also gives them healing benefits. I have over 30 years of culinary experience, so I know that together we can make magic. Now, that was pretty good. And I can tell you've had some training. Maybe you even had some of my training before, but that's okay. Now, I'm going to pre- <laughs> that was the first question, okay? Okay. Okay. Now, the second question, my sister, if what do you, um, who do you believe would pay for your services? I believe that everybody, cooks on any level, would pay for my service. So anyone who uses the kitchen, whether they're cooking in it or eating in it. Awesome. And the people that decide to hire you and pay you the money that you ask for, what do you call them? Current, I call them my customers. Your customers, not clients or anything? No, I call them my customers. Customers, cool. And then the last question, my sister. So what business would you say that you are in? I'm in the flavor business. You're in the flavor business. Okay. Yeah. That was pretty good. She answered all four of my questions. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that I do what you do based upon what I just learned. And I know I don't know your business nearly as well as you do, but based upon what I just learned, I want you to ask me what do I do for a living and let me answer for you. So you said it was Brian, right? That's it. Brian, That's right. what yep. do you do for a living? <laughs> well, you know how there are so many um, people that um, earn their livelihood by serving food and they want to earn their money by serving food, by cooking and presenting. But a lot of times they have great challenges as to creating something unique or they have great challenges actually getting it in front of the audience that they really want. And it's just frustrating for them. You know what I mean? I do. Right. Well, what I do is actually make it easy for them through my services as a coach in this arena. I do this not only so they can create delicious combinations, maybe that they never thought about before, but actually earn significantly more money because the people that they serve will bring more people to them. That's what I do. Listen, now, how was my answer? That was good, man. I, I love that. I want so, some. Brian, Brian, yes. do you do you say money? Like at a purpose. Baby, <laughs> everywhere I go, all the time, people talk. I do say money. People have that's like a signature of mine. People talk about that all the time. I do stress the word money. <laughs> I might not say it the old way ever again. <laughs> I know that's right. I don't know how I got stuck in that, but it's been. 15, 20 years, I've been saying money, you know, but that's how I do it. Okay. So based on what you said, my next question would be, so how can I get in contact with you? How can I, how exactly. can I get more? Now, yeah. Shawnee, you committed a couple of crimes when I asked you those four questions. Like I'm going to okay. go to jail? Not to go to jail. <laughs> okay. But I'm going to be in lockup? But no, you're not going to be in lockup, but it could cost you money. Okay. Mm. Two problems you did, two crimes. Okay. One is you did a great job of painting the problem. That was great that you solved and you painted yourself as a solution. But the first crime you committed was you didn't tell why you did it. You do all that cool stuff so that they can what? The ending of your story is more important than the beginning and the middle. Why do you do all that cool stuff? You have to say one or two benefits. If you don't say one or two benefits of what you do, what will happen is they'll lump you into the category of anyone else who does anything close to what you do. And there is no one like you. No one has your collection of experiences. No one has you've seen what you've seen. No one's been what you've been. So don't even let people lump you into categories ever. You tell the benefits and they associate that benefit with you. That's the first crime. The second crime you committed, you said, I said, who do you believe would pay for your service? She says, anyone or everyone. Now, that answer is never true. Okay, because 
it's not going to be anyone and everyone. It's going to be the ones that can connect with you and your personality. And you don't want to work with anyone and everyone. No, man. Okay? No, sir. A racist white man <laughs> who doesn't like black people and disrespects black business women. Is that a potential good client for you? No, sir. He's not. <laughs> He's a part of that anyone you and even, everyone. You don't even know who you talk to. You don't even know you're talking to when you said that. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on for one second. I just want to give a shout out to Helen Plant for being out there. Salika Jones, thank you for being out there, sweetheart. That's my baby girl. And Kendra K.B. Vaughn also said hello and great love. Listen. <laughs> Listen. Well, Anita's out there saying this is good information. You don't even know. You Shani don't even is know. militant, right? So you... <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> my company is called Can Do Spice. That's named after my father, Kenny Can Do Bond, and he would not approve of such a thing. Okay. Now, so when you, you said, when you said that, 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 that was it. that was it. That was it. mostly entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Here's I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you guys a gift right now. Um, and and Barbara, gift. I, I haven't done this with you before, but you can play along if you want to. But ask yourself, audience members, ask yourself this question. Why would anybody hire you? Why do you think they hire you? If I was to put you on a clock with three minutes on the timer and I told you to write down 10 great reasons why someone should work with you and your services, go. Could you write down 10 great reasons? Almost all of you could. OK, if I put you on the clock and had you write down 10 great reasons why someone should work with you and your services. Know how I'm wording that you and your services because you are a part of your services and you are the biggest part of your services. OK, so they have to buy you first. But if I had you write down 10 great reasons why someone should work with you and your services, some of the entrepreneurs on here will have things on their list like because I'm hardworking because I'm passionate, because I love people, because I give, because I'm available all the time, because I have 10 years experience or 20 years experience, because I have four degrees in doing this, because I'm honest, because I'm hardworking. All of those are great, great things, but none of them are a reason to hire you. That's it. They're not. Those are reasons to make people like you. And liking you is not enough of a reason for them to give you their money. People I you <laughs> so they can give me what now? <laughs> Their money. <laughs> uh, Brian is the only one thing. to say it like that. He's the only one. Johnny and I have tried to say it like that. <laughs> we cannot. We cannot. <laughs> oh, Lord, Lordy. But people have gotten that twisted. Yeah. They think the key to selling themselves and their services is being well liked. Right. Being well liked will have them save you a seat at the cookout, or they might respect you, or even admire you, and never yeah. do business with you. But they I need the money. There are a lot of people that go ahead. But I need that money. <laughs> They're not gonna give you their money that way. Okay. <laughs> that whole concept of uh, no like and trust. People have got that twisted. You know, and even that is an abbreviation of the original Greek formula. The Greek formula is people that must, they must like you before they can listen to you. They must listen to you before they can trust you. And they must trust you before they can buy for you. But they only have to like you enough to hear you. They don't have to like you enough to want you in their wedding. So people got that twisted. I'm going to give you some stuff. Okay. I'm going to give come you some on, stuff. Come on, come on with it. Stop playing. Stop playing. <laughs> we need right. to get to the money. Write this, write, write this down if you're writing. The first thing I want you to write down is the word time, T-I-M-E, time, time. Is there any part of your services that will save, save your clients time? Ooh, time? That's good Are stuff. Y'all writing that down? Yeah, right. You can write it if you want to. Are there any results that they will be able to achieve faster as a result of working with you than they would have if they didn't work with you? Okay, the people that work with Barbara, she helps them reach their results faster because of her talks and because of her workshops and because of her coaching. If there's any part of what you do that will help your clients either save some time or achieve a result faster, you should talk about that because that is a reason for them to give you some of their money. Okay. <laughs> time is the first one. Okay. Okay. The second one is the word, <laughs> is the word money itself. Now this breaks down in two ways. People will give you their money if you will either save them some money 
save them or help them to earn more money Ooh. or both. Or both. Or now both. think about your services. Does your services help your clients to either save some money, earn more money or both? For most of you with just a little bit of creativity, it's both. And if you have a way to help them to earn more or save more, you should talk about that because that is a reason for them to give you money. Time, money, good feelings is the third one. Good feelings. This <laughs> also that works, works, that works well with, with my, Juanita McWhite's uh, business, that, that good feeling, because when she makes you jewelry, when, if, you, if you're a jewelry person like me, a jewelry person like me, when she makes you that jewelry and it's unique and it's different, she needs to definitely tell how she makes you feel when you put on this unique, one of a kind, you're not going to get this coming and going look that mm -hmm. she does. And what's her name again, please? Juanita McWhite. Juanita McWhite. Uh -huh. You know how sometimes when you go to an event and you want to make a statement, you want to stand out, you want to make an impression, and you want to do it before you even open your mouth. Woo! You a jewelry that makes an impact and, imp and impacts a mood and a feeling just when you show up. <laughs> I need a mic to drop. <laughs> Did you just put your sauce on it just like that? Yeah. See, well, we just said thank you, and you're absolutely on point. That's the thing it. is, it. it looks like I'm amazing, but it's what it is. I've learned a system. I use a story format. Once I understand the problems you solve, okay, <laughs> then all I got to do is paint you as a solution and tell a benefit or two. That's why I can do it instantly. If I can understand, and I just put it in a framework, okay? You know how. I'm inviting <laughs> you to agree to a problem. Why do you say don't make me shout? Huh? You, you just you just help somebody out there, uh, Brian. I want you to know that. Juanita okay. said, don't make me shout. Don't make me shout. <laughs> That's my Juanita right there. Okay. <laughs> okay, good feelings happens in a few ways. People give their money to the person or the thing. The person or the thing that they believe will help them to either feel better about themselves. Can you help them to feel better about themselves? Yes. Or can you help them to imagine other people having a higher opinion of them? Yeah. Or both? Can you help so them feel better about themselves? Y'all saw me bow my head. I wasn't it? praying. I was writing. I was bowing my head. I, I wasn't praying. I was writing. <laughs> <laughs> can saying. you help them to imagine others having a higher opinion of them? Or yes. both? Yes. That's so good. A uh, no 60 year old man buying a red convertible sports car. He bought that car because he believes that when he drives it, he looks cool in it. Mm -hmm. And he also believes that when you see him, you're going to agree yes, he looks cool in that car. A man buying a financial plan for his family. He did that because he believes as the head of the household, that's a responsible thing for him to do. And he could also imagine his wife and children appreciating the something that dad did for them. That's so awesome. Can you tell help us about that? Tell us about this gift here. The gift? Oh, the one, two, three formula. What I just did, y'all don't want to get the one, two, three formula. What I just did with Shawnee, what I've done with my sister Barbara, the one, two, three formula, my free gift to you tonight, teaches you the story format. It teaches you the story format is what it does. And it also gives you a beginning how to sell your services as a campaign. Okay. Instead of just waiting to what the market brings you, how to go get you some business. Okay. That's it. It's the one, two, three formula. You get, get some you business to, to go us. get it. <laughs> get some business to get to the money. That's right. That's okay. right. That's what I do. I help people to sell themselves and their services better than they ever have before so that they earn more money than ever before. I believe that God is uniquely gifted and qualified me to do this work. And if I don't do it, I'm not giving him honor. And I do want to honor my Lord. Okay. I love Ooh. that. So. Time, money, good feelings. Number four, solutions to a problem. Solutions to a problem. Now, this is not all the problems you solve. This is the big and obvious problem that you solve only. Okay? The big okay. and obvious problem that you solve. You want to be known for one big and obvious problem that you solve. You don't call Brian to help you with your relationship stuff. Brian helps you to sell your stuff. That's what I do. And that's what I want to be known for. I promise you, I have spoken across the globe because they know me as the sales speaker. 
they know I talk about sales. If we put together a business format and we need someone to talk about sales, we got mindset, we got social media, we got this, that, and the other, but no one talking about how to sell, Brian K. Mina is the guy. So that's what you want to be known for, whatever your thing is, okay? And if you don't know what your thing is, seek it out. Find it by tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Time, money, good feelings, solutions to a problem. Number five is good health. Yes. Good health. Now, stay with me here. Your services doesn't improve your client's health as you should. in any way. Yes. In any way. Okay. Your service. Think about this now. There's a big, there's two big words I'm looking for you guys to say. How does your service improve their health? Barbara, Shani, how does your services improve someone's health? Reduces their stress level. Bingo is number one. Stress. If there is a way that you should see yourself as taking away some of their stressors, taking away some of their worries. Those are the two words. If you offer something that helps them in a way for them to stress a little bit less, to worry a little bit less, you should talk about that because that is another very good reason for them to give you some of their money. <laughs> I'm waiting for it. We My love sister, you, Brian. Coming. So tell us, tell us how we reach you to get a consultation with you. I put the link in, um, especially now. I'm going to push to do one-on-one -on -one consultations. I offer a 30-minute, up to 30-minute, selling yourself and your services consultation. And it's a very expensive. It's free. It's expensive if you don't do it because then you're mm -hmm. competing against other people that do do it. Okay? And they'll have the advantage over you because they work with a sales confidence coach. But my, I, put the, I put the link in there for them to schedule. It's a Calendly link, calendly.com forward slash BK McNeil. I think I put it in the private chat, yeah. um, ladies. Yeah, yeah, and I want you to forward. share that because there's probably going to be one or two people on the feed tonight that might have connected with me and my spirit or my energy. And that's the one I want to talk to. You know, I want to talk to that person. Because everybody's not your people. No. No. And you don't want everybody to be your Hello. people either. None Hello. of you can say that, Barbara. You cannot. <laughs> Everybody doesn't resonate. You know, I have a coach that said to me once, we are all like tuning forks. Mm -hmm. And when you hit a tuning fork on the side of an edge of a table or a side of an edge of a desk, it vibrates. That's right. And every other tuning fork that is on that same what? Wavelength. Frequency mm -hmm. will vibrate at the same time. That's right. And that's like your people, the that's people right. who are called to you and you are called to serve will know you by your voice. Just like with Jesus, my sheep know my, my voice. Lord. That's right. That's right. Right. Um, everybody's, not for everybody's not for you. And you don't want everybody to be no. with you, please. No. No. Okay. So whenever I hear someone say, when I ask who do you believe would want your services, if they say anything close to anybody or everybody i already know they're incorrect okay okay so I appreciate you, playing you, that have, you have such tact and ten your tenacity and your tact is so on point that's the one thing i like about you love 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 about you is even though shawnee said that you didn't make her feel bad for saying it you said that's not quite what you want you could have said wrong yeah. wrong answer <laughs> <laughs> Hit my calendar up. You need a consultation today. <laughs> <laughs> but that would have been the wrong way, okay? And I don't want to do that. that you wrong? don't want to do that either. Why is that? Why is that wrong? Why is it wrong to make them feel bad? Yes. Okay? You're making them feel bad, which means for them to dare do anything with you, they're admitting that they made a bad choice. Right. And to do something with you, they have to potentially make another bad choice. Right. You put them in a boat where they're making bad choices, bad choices, bad choices. No, no, no. She wasn't terrible either. Okay. No. She just missed a couple of places. She wasn't completely out of focus, just a little bit. That's she all. Right. She might be like a small <gasps> Yeah, a little bit. Petty theft. <laughs> and, and, and if I'm her friend, I want to be helpful. This is know. such a fabulous conversation. Do you realize we are at the top of the hour and it is time for us to get out of here? Oh my God, Ryan, you have to come back to the show at some point. We had so much time, so much fun talking about the mood. 
<laughs> I knew I would have a good time with you ladies. I knew that already. Yes, yes. You did yes. that. You did that thing. We we want to know one more time how do we get in touch with you before we leave? Tell us um, one more time. The easiest way to just go to my website briankmcneil.com. I am much more active on LinkedIn and Facebook. I'm not as active on 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 Instagram and Twitter, but LinkedIn, I'm Brian K McNeil or the Sales Confidence Coach. You can mm -hmm. find me under either name, Brian K McNeil. On Facebook, Brian Keith McNeil or the Sales Confidence Coach. That's okay. what I do. I infuse entrepreneurs with confidence so they can sell themselves and their services. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Shani, as always, for being at my, my ride or die, my side, <laughs> my CIO, Chief Image Officer. I love you to pieces. Thank you, Dr. Kelly, for giving me the opportunity. Thank you, all of you fans out there who come on weekly and share this information. Go out there and subscribe to the Barbara H. Smith YouTube channel. Share, subscribe, check out Ryan K. McNeil. He's got some wonderful information. He is the sales confidence coach. You know what time it is? It's time for you to step into your greatness because the world is waiting for you. That's my time. Good night. Good night. I also want to say, if you want to get in contact with us, yes. sponsorships, yes. support at speakcoachtrain.com. Oh, yeah. You had that. Support at speakcoachtrain.com. Thanks, Rashani. She always keeps me in check. Brian, hang out with us for a few minutes. I got to talk to you after the show. And we are out of here. Good night.